we're going to be doing an installation of Ghost Solution Suite 3.3. The server that we're using today is a clean 2016 server joined to the domain. Windows updates in place, a couple of applications like Chrome and Adobe Reader, a couple other things in place, but basically a clean uh, installed server. Windows updates and stuff. First, we'll need to get uh, Ghost Solution Suite downloaded if we don't already have it. If you'll go to uh, fileconnect.symantec.com, you can then enter your serial number there. Serial numbers generally do look like an M number as given in this example. Select your serial number and hit enter. Then uh, take a peek. You should be given uh, the opportunity to download 3.3 and 3.2. Keep in mind that your serial number is not a universal serial number, even though it can maybe give you more than one version of the product. If you have a 3.3 serial number, do well, regardless, you should be downloading the latest version of the product in, uh, at this time. But if your serial number is a 3.2 serial number, you will want to download 3.2 because it won't activate the 3.3 or contact the licensing team and get your proper 3.3 number. So the number we use today is a 3.3 number. And we'll want to go ahead and select Ghost 3.3 Multilingual. From the options that we have then, we have this BDC GPL file, FRM file. This is the Linux boot package that is compatible with Ghost Solution Suite if you're going to be using uh, Linux PE environments, Lin PE for your automation uh, environment. We also include the Go standard tools uh, in here and uh, the Go standard tools are included in the full installer if you should be downloading it at original release. However, if you're watching this video at a later time and there's already a maintenance pack, you would be good to download the latest version of the standard tools because the primary installer for Solution Suite 3.3 will stay and maintenance packs will be applied on top of it. However, the standard tools generally will have a new release with the maintenance pack appropriate for whatever's current. So do uh, download the standard tools cleanly, uh, but the 3.3, we have to start with 3.3, even if there's a maintenance pack here. So we'll go ahead and expand that out. If you check the boxes here and download the files, it'll use a smart downloader. Our connection's adequate. We're gonna go ahead and just download from the Ghost Solution Suite 3. HTTPS download. Some browsers also don't uh, appreciate this smart downloader, so I always just expand it out and download this way. So I've downloaded those ahead of time and I have them here. I also have my server SLF file and my workstation SLF file. Let me open those up here real quick. Okay, I've opened up my workstation uh, file. Generally, it would be labeled the M number and then SLF, but to keep my files from being uh, utilized or used to download the product, uh, I've changed the names of them. Uh, I've also changed my serial number uh, in here, but if we look at the file real quick, we have our product name, and so uh, if in doubt we know which version that it's for, 3.3, uh, how many it's for, the sign date, and then it's important to know if this is for desktops or for servers. Desktop and notebook licenses only will work on client OSs. They're not actually for the physical hardware, but for the client OS. So if you were running a server OS on a desktop or a notebook, it would require a server license, um, even though it's a desktop or a notebook that you're running it on. So this is based on desktop. OS's. The server one then is for server OS's. Now the server one can be used for desktops, uh, meaning if you had 100 licenses for server and you were to then go over on desktops, it would start consuming your server licenses. However, if you go over on server licenses, it won't start using your desktop licenses. So you do need to have the right level of licensing there. So we'll go ahead and close this guy. I don't want to save it because I just made changes. We're going to go ahead and uh, right click and run as administrator. It's important to do in all of the ghost installation steps. Make sure you're running as admin. We then can extract and execute, which generally will be what we want to do, but I'm going to extract only and show you the folder path that uh, we have and the files that are in there. 
All right, so let's go to the C drive, if that's where we defaulted to. And we have a DS setup folder in here. And if we were to go to the setup executable here, we could then right click and run as administrator, and that would be kicking off the installer. So if we had only, if we had done an extract and install, this would be what would be coming up in front of us. So I didn't want to do the install immediately. I wanted to show you this, and I wanted to also do checking for the prerequisites because there are a handful of things that need to be done before we can install Ghost. As I said, this is a stock server with no changes in place except for Windows updates, and we do need to make a couple of different changes here. So from here we can see that the uh, GSS is a server OS, only server OSs are supported, we get a pass. The current logged in user is part of an administrator group, we get a pass. Uh, USC, uh, sorry, UAC does need to be disabled, it's currently enabled, so we can follow this KB doc. It'll take us to Microsoft page. It's a bit dated. I think it's uh, Windows Vista related, but the steps are still the same. If we go ahead and uh, go to MS config in the run, then we go to tools and we can change UAC settings. There's lots of different ways to change them, but here's how we can get there quick. Launch that and put it to never notify. Okay. And okay, now that will have to be a reboot to take place. Uh, because we're gonna be using uh, SQL Express, we do need to install uh, .NET 3.5. Currently we're not checking for it, but it is something that we need to be installing for, or rather need to install. So quick way, server manager. I guess it's not quick, but it's how we get there. Local server. Manage, manage, add roles and features. Next, next, make sure we're selecting this particular server. Um, it's on the next page. There we go. We're going to check .NET 3.5 included SQL Express that we ship with. If you're using your own SQL, then uh, we don't need that. Got that installed, so we can close that. Later we'll get into some of the IIS items. Uh, we will have an installer for the web console, going over the IIS items that are needing to be added. Also we'll be doing the uh, iPixie, etc., cetera, uh, getting those installed, but we'll do that at a later time. Database checking, it's okay because we are not uh, upgrading, we don't have a prior one if they're was a prior install, we would expect this to tell us something about uh, finding the database. Uh, port numbers uh, available, hopefully all of them are available. If this is an upgrade, then we would maybe see these in use if Ghost was up and running. So we'll go ahead and uh, actually I didn't need to save that. Cancel this, thank you. Okay, so we are ready to do an install. Uh, we've installed .NET, we have disabled the um, UAC, we do need to do the Windows firewall. It can be problematic. So we'll just go ahead and disable that. Got it, good, I have them off already. Uh, if I hadn't, it would be good to turn them off for now. And we're gonna go ahead and do a custom install. That allows us more opportunity to make our selections install we did run as admin so if you are rebooting after doing net or something else we can then make sure and right click run as admin to do the setup default path would be ideal we do re uh, require uh, that a couple of different places however it can be changed here during the install just keep in mind that you're in a custom location and some of the various different pieces later will have to be changed to also point to your custom locations. We are going to create the ghost share and we're going to give the full access to the credentials. Because I have a license file, we could browse to it and include it here, but I'm not going to so you can see what it'll look like if you don't have your license file yet pops up and asks if we'd like to do a trial license, and yes, we do want to use the trial license. This will let me also later show you how to import your license files. 
we are going to install Microsoft SQL Server on this server and the server credentials then to connect. SQL Server will take quite a bit of time here to do its install. We'll pick it up in the speed and then continue on. Now that SQL is installed, it will do a quick search to look for the SQL servers. If we hadn't done a SQL install, it would have just done a SQL search and we would have then seen our list of SQL servers listed here. You can see on the network I have more than one SQL server and so the uh, server is identified when it searches uh, for active uh, SQL servers but we are going to be doing it on this server with an onbox. The default port is 1433 and the database name that we're going to be creating is Express. If a reinstallation was being done and we wanted to create a new uh, database we could put in uh, a number like Express 1 or 2 or such and it would then re uh, sorry rather it would create a new uh, database for us rather than recycling the old one if we were thinking maybe there was a problem with the database we're going to go next here we're going to use NT authentication we are going to install Pixie server on this computer I'm not going to do it on a remote computer, but you certainly could. Uh, make sure the IP of your server is correct. Also make sure that we have a static IP address on your server. It's one thing I didn't mention. We do need to have a static IP address on these servers so that each time a change happens, we don't have to go and reconfigure a bunch of things. So static IP. If we have to change an IP address for some reason, there is documentation on how to do that, but it would be best to not. And it's noting that we do have to have DHCP servers uh, in place on the network so that Pixie can function. And then we are going to have agents connect directly to the Ghost server. And here is the IP address of the Ghost server and the port number that it's going to be addressing. We are going to install it on this system. And it's important we in hit the install here. It looks like it's ready to go, but we actually need to hit install. All right, at the end of the Ghost install, we have the ability to remotely install Ghost Solution Suite agents. We're not going to be doing that at this point. We can go over that at a later time to make sure that uh, we can do that from within the console. So we'll finish up here and close out of here. And we should then have a desktop icon to get into the Ghost Solution Suite. We'll confirm that the database was built and created. We'll take a look at the help file, help and about to see what uh, version we're working with, sort of things that we go over with support. And indeed at this point we are just the original 3.3 release, no maintenance packs. Now maintenance packs for Ghost, if you haven't gotten to a maintenance pack yet, are additions to the original, so they are not full installs, but you have to install the full version and then install the maintenance pack. However, the maintenance packs do build uh, uniquely uh, on each other. They are not requiring prior. So if you were to come to Ghost 3.3 and the current maintenance pack that was out was, say, maintenance pack 3, you would not need to install 1, then 2. You can go directly to 3, and it would actually be advisable to go directly to 3 at that point. So here we are. Ghost is installed. We don't have any uh, computers or jobs set up, but it is here and we do have connection to the database. I do need to talk about where the licensing gets stored to. This is important, especially if you have a long running uh, Ghost server and have some older files that maybe need to be cleared out to make room for new files. So in the install directory, on my machine, a C drive program x86 Altaris Express deployment server. Under licenses, 
then we have our license here and we can open that with a notepad or a similar product and see some information about it because this is a trial license though really doesn't give me much info a real license will have more user friendly um, information in it so i will not be opening up the license again just because i've already taken a peek at that at the beginning of the recording but i will show you so if we had licenses in that folder that were old open them up and see that they're old expired or for the prior version we can delete them but to add new ones we'll go ahead and register and then we will browse to our desktop and where i saved my server licenses there we go and then we will tools and i'm sorry help and register and now we can see that we have additional uh, nodes in here there we go and we can go to help and about and see a little bit more about uh, about that apparently both of my licenses were actually client licenses not server licenses because here they both are so i can take a look at that later and confirm that but um, that's okay here we go expiration dates and so on Okay, there we go. That's uh, how we import licensing. Thank you very much.